Hey guys, TrueGreen7 here, and a few months ago, I made a video explaining the origins and etymology of all legendary and mythical Pokemon from generations 1, 2, and 3. That means it's time for gens 4 and 5. These two generations have so many legendaries that it would be impossible to include generations 6 and 7 in part 2, so just keep in mind that every single speculation as to the inspiration of all these legendaries won't be addressed. I also won't cover the in-game lore of these Pokemon. Mythical Pokemon are included, and yes, Fione is too. Why must you be so confusing, Fione? And last but not least, enjoy! You little rascals, you. Let's start with everybody's favorite legendary trio. After the legendary beasts, legendary birds, Reggie trio, weather trio, and every other single legendary trio. But how about we treat all our legendaries with some respect? The three lake guardians seem to be based on, well, first, the subtractive colors, yellow, cyan, and magenta, and secondly, they seem to have been inspired by the Imperial Regalia of Japan, also known as the Three Sacred Treasures. Yuxi, the knowledge Pokemon, represents the Yata no Kagami Sacred Mirror, which embodies wisdom and honesty. Its name may be a combination of Yukusaki, meaning future death destination, and Pixie, but it's also likely that its name is a combination of you, as in you, and Pixie. Mesprit is based on the Yasakani no Magatama, a comma-shaped jewel which represents benevolence and goodwill and all those kinda nice things. Its name is a combo of me and Sprite, while its Japanese name, Emirate, comes from emotion, or emu, which means to smile. And wouldn't you know, Mesprit smiles. Pretty neat, huh? Azelf is based on the Kusunagi no Tsurugi, the legendary sword representing courage and honor. Its name comes from Azure and Elf, or Us and Elf. Its Japanese name, Agnome, comes from Agnosticism, the belief in human reasoning, and Gnome. But now it's time for the Creation Trio! Oh my god, radical! So cool! Uh, they're okay. I'm just kidding, they're awesome! Now brace yourself for some heavy Japanese mythology. You gonna learn some stuff, boy. Dialga and Palkia are based on the Shinto legend of Izanami and Izanagi, who are said to have created an island using a spear and erected a pillar on it, and from there, created the islands of Japan. Spear pillar is a blatant reference to this. They just smack you right in the face with this reference. Appearance-wise, Dialga looks like certain sauropods. Its steel typing could be a reference to the hardness of diamonds, or the fact that clocks are made of metal. And if you squint real hard, most parts of its body look like clock hands and gears. Its name is just derived from the word diamond, and possibly dial, like a, like a sundial. Which tells time, and this this is this is the Pokemon of time, guys. And the Pokemon of space, Palkia or Parukia in Japan, gets its name from Pearl or Paru in Japanese. Physically, it could be based on various dragons, the Plateosaurus or Oviraptor, combined with the Pearl, of course. Giratina may be based on Seta, a giant centipede from the Japanese fairy tale My Lord Bag of Rice. Giratina's altered form may be based on a basilisk or sauropod, while its origin form may be based on a serpent and quite possibly the Bobby Worm. And while I'm not going to show a picture of what I'm about to talk about here because it's really creepy, a house centipede's face looks exactly like a Giratina. Have fun googling that later. But overall, Giratina is the personification of antimatter. But a lot of Westerners interpret the Pokemon as a representation of Satan in the Pokemon world, who was banished from heaven, has multiple forms, and is associated with 666, just like Giratina, making Giratina and Vivian the Pokemon Devils. Its name is a combination of Girasol, a type of opal, Guillotine, and Purachina, Japanese for platinum. Heatran is probably based on volcanic remains, and its steel type is a reference to the iron-nickel alloy core of the Earth. The fact that it crawls on walls and has access to bug bite may lead us to believe that it's based on large insects. Its name is a combination of heat, and I don't need to explain what heat is, and transfer, maybe even transitional metals like iron. Regigigas, like the other legendary golems, is based on the golems of Hebrew mythology, with some nice little moss on his feet. Its name comes from regis, meaning royal in Latin, and gigas, Greek for giant. I mean, they're not wrong, this thing would not fit in my house. Cresselia's physique kinda looks like a swan with a crescent moon theme going on. Cresselia is a combination of crescent and possibly Selene, the Greek goddess of the moon. Wait, 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 what are you doing here, Darkrai? Leave! You're too scary. Ah, fine. Darkrai is based on the concept of nightmares. He resembles a shadow, various jinns, or Phobator, but he's basically just an amalgamation of both the Boogeyman and the Greek god Morpheus. His name is a combination of Dark and Kurai, meaning dark in Japanese. Good old Dark Dark here is gonna float away now. But we'll move on to Manaphy, who is named after Mana, another term for power or energy, and a shortening of Fairy. Maybe Manatee has something to do with it. They both just float around there menacingly, but Manaphy is 100% based on the sea angel, tiny transparent mollusks. Fione is based on the Cleone sea angel, which are incredibly popular in Hokkaido, the Japanese prefecture that Sinnoh is based on. Damn it, there's still more to go from this region. Shaman is a hedgehog. He's a hedgehog, there's no doubt about it. Don't argue with me. <laughs> Come on, he's a hedgehog. 
the hedgehog. It could also be a reference to chia pets. You never know. Its bouquet-like appearance does reinforce its status as the gratitude Pokemon. Its name could come from Shai or Xie, Japanese and Chinese for gratitude and thanks. Shaman or Stamen could be other influences, as well as the Hebrew word for sky, Shemaim. Slap my knee and call me Shirley, cause wouldn't you know, Shaman has a sky form. And even though we're not even close to done with this video, I'm going straight to the god Pokemon. Arceus, yes, Arceus, with a hard C, is based on a creator deity from many different cultures. His stance resembles Egyptian idols like Apis, the arc on its back resembles the Dharma Chakra, his story is akin to the Shinto gods Kunitoko Tachi and Ameno Minakanushi who summoned Izanami and Izanagi to create Japan. His myth is also close to Pangu's, and maybe he represents the Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara, who in Buddhism is either pictured with 11 heads and 1,000 arms, or in a white, four-armed manifestation. Oh yeah, and llamas. Its name can be a combination of Ark, meaning the highest point, Archon, meaning Lord in Greek, Arcanus, Latin for mysterious, Archi, Greek for beginning, Archetype, and Deus, Latin for God, and in alchemy, Arceus is a term used to refer to the most dense aspect of the astral plane. Take that information with you. Go tell your mommy, hey, True Green 7 taught me about the alchemical term for the lowest aspect of the astral plane from which all life continues to grow. Uh, no more YouTube for you, son. On to Gen 5. Oh my god, there's so much to cover. Victini's head is a reference to Usagi Ringo, a method of cutting apples to look like rabbits. Its concept is drawn from Nike, the winged Greek goddess of victory. It's got a V on its head. V is for victory, after all, and it's also the Roman numeral for 5, like Gen 5, which Victini is the first of in the Univadex. Its name comes from Victory and Teeny, cause it's teeny. You know what isn't teeny? Cobalion, the leader of the Swords of Justice, a trio inspired by the Three Musketeers. He's based on Athos, the de facto leader of the Musketeers, and his appearance resembles various ungulates, the Markor, and types of antelopes, with a stag thrown in there for taste. His name comes from Cobalt, which is both a blue pigment and a metallic element, and possibly Champion. Terrakion is based on Porthos, the largest and strongest member of the Three Musketeers. He physically looks like a bighorn sheep on steroids and an ox. His name comes from Terra, Latin for Earth, the Terra Terracotta color and possibly champion, while Verizian is a mixture of Viridian and champion, maybe even Horizon. It's based on Aramis, the most feminine and skilled of the three musketeers. Verizian looks like a Garanook, Gazelle, and maybe even a Stag. The new addition to the group, Keldeo, represents D'Artagnan, who is a young feathered cap wearing man who basically joins the three musketeers. But Keldeo is also heavily inspired by the Kelpie, which is also a water horse, and the Kirin, or Chinese unicorn, who can also walk on water. Its name comes from Kelda, meaning fountain in Old Norse, Kelpie, and Rodeo. Now the forces of nature, also known as the Kami Trio, the Cloud Trio, Legendary Genies, and the Floating Mustachios in the New York club scene, have cool origins that compensate for their design, I guess. Tornadus, in his incarnate form, is based on Fujin, the Kami of Wind, while Thunderous is based on Raijin, the Kami of Thunder and Lightning. In Tornadus's Therian form, he looks like a bird of prey or even Huitzilopochtli from Aztec mythology. His name comes from Tornado and Aeolus, the Greek ruler of the winds. Thunderous comes from Thunder and Aeolus, and Landorus comes from, you guessed it, Land and Aeolus. On to the meat and potatoes of this generation, the Tao Trio, based on the balancing concept of yin and yang. But even though the white yang is representative of masculinity, Sugimori has stated that Reshiram's design represents light and feminine aspects, to contrast with Zekrom's masculinity. Both have electric turbine tails, they both take design aspects from various dragons and dinosaurs, but Reshiram's flowing head resembles a smoke trail, while Zekrom's crest resembles a thunder cloud. Reshiram's name comes from Shiro, which is white in Japanese, with the soft re indicating that this dragon is softer and airy, while the ze in Zekrom was chosen because it sounds more intense and powerful, and because Kuro is black in Japanese. So re and Shiro come together to form Reshiram, while ze and Kuro come together to create Zekram. Kyurem represents Wuji, the absence of yin and yang, as well as the temperature of absolute zero, which is pretty cold if you ask me. His design is kind of like a mix of a dragon and and theropod. Kyurem comes from kyure, meaning rapid cooling, and the suffix mu, which indicates nothingness, because alas, this thing is but a hollow shell of its former self. Now let's boost your mood with Meloetta, who is based on a muse, a goddess in Greek mythology who is able to inspire artistic creation. Her headpiece resembles a treble clef as well as a headset microphone. In her aria form, she looks like a pop star, while in her pirouette form, she resembles a ballerina or flamenco dancer. The name comes from melody and pirouette, the ballet movement, and Etta just makes it sound more feminine and small, and Genesect is just a giant bug from the Paleozoic era, combined with an artillery mech. Yeah, very anime! Its name comes from Gen 
genetic and insect. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please leave a like so I know to make part 3. Subscribe if you haven't, and make sure to check out part 1. If you already have, press the bottom clip for more videos. It would also be amazing if you followed me on Facebook and Twitter so I can share way more awesome stuff. But for now, I'll see you guys very soon.